Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. The usual message from me, please subscribe. As you can see, content is out daily. Some new, some different, not all gyroplane related, but hopefully it's all interesting and it makes it more worthwhile making something that people enjoy watching. This film is part 16 of the history of the gyroplane, where we will look at the issue of pilot-induced oscillation, or PIO. Before we took a couple of episodes out to look at some technology demonstrators, we had arrived at the end of the 1990s with the focus back upon accidents and in particular gyroplane stability. There were essentially two areas that were talked about and still are talked about as the solution. The first is the tailplane and the second the propeller thrust line and the vertical centre of gravity and of course there is controversy. Nothing could be simple with gyroplanes. Let's start with what PIO, pilot induced oscillation, is. You will recall that over the years many sport gyroplanes have crashed and by far the largest factor to 1999 was attributed to zero G or low G. Typically the rotor would also contact the rudder and various failures to either the rotor, rudder or both and the aircraft would seem to tumble out of the sky. There would then be a contributory factor of pilot experience and a debate about the adequacy of the training. Pitch instability, caused either by the pilot's own manoeuvring of the aircraft or by environmental factors, gust of wind, strong thermals or turbulent conditions, and the pilot over controlling the aircraft in pitch, the scenario would become termed pilot induced oscillation or PIO. Of course, PIO was magnified or caused by an aircraft with a high propeller thrust line, but that's another chapter. At some point, the over-controlling of the aircraft in pitch sees G at less than unity, and at low G the rotor slows, because it is no longer being driven as it was at 1G, and with less drive and high drag the rotor slows. In extreme situations, an increase in flapping motion during the attempted pull level or pull up, and the rotor hits the propeller and rudder. With the loss of the rotor, a nose down moment about the gyroplane centre of gravity is generated because of engine thrust and reduced rotor drag, and the gyroplane will continue nose down with the rotor following it in a negative angle of attack. Typically, rotors, propeller, and tailplane are completely destroyed, and shortly after, the machine crashes inverted. One solution posed to this pitch instability is the addition of a horizontal surface to the tailplane or horizontal stabiliser which is argued acts as a damper. It has been something that Yuka Turbamaki has been talking about and lobbying for since the 1970s but in the early years people like Ken Brock, Ken Wallace and Igor Benson didn't agree with his view and their aircraft didn't have horizontal stabilisers. Here are some of the more recent letters from Turbamaki to the FAA and EAA around the time of air command accidents that I'll link in the description so you can see the detail. But you can see, Turvey Mackey was very much alive to the issues where authority was asleep. Turvey Mackey's rationale to the resistance by the old guard against horizontal stabilizers was a belief that the practice derives its origin from the Benson gyroglider, which indeed does not require a horizontal tail because of the stabilizing effect of the tow rope and the very low forward speeds at which it's usually flown. The gyrocopter in free flight has a much higher speed range. This is actually a very interesting point because literature from Campbell cricket designer Peter Lovegrove talks of the problem of PIO and that good training on a gyroglider seems to be the key. One assumes he was looking through the training end of the telescope. However, he does also acknowledge the need for a horizontal stabilizer although his early aircraft didn't have them, and none of those aircraft suffered from fatal accidents. The horizontal tailplane was adopted and offered as an aftermarket addition to many models of gyroplane in the 1990s before authority acted, and despite the view from some later, including the Glasgow University study on gyroplane dynamics, that suggested that the tailplane offered more of a comfortable feeling to the pilot in terms of sp stability, via subjective dampening than it was to show in mathematical modelling. 
Of course, there are tailplanes, and then there are tailplanes. There are different aerofoil sections, angles of attack, and the positioning of the tailplane in reference to the propeller slipstream. It isn't so easy as just bolting a barn door to the tail. To confuse things further, a modified Air Command crashed fatally in 1996 with the tailplane, although possibly badly fitted and finger trouble couldn't have been ruled out. Although we return to the Campbell Cricket, because that aircraft could have given us clues to the solution all along, because it was designed with great attention given to the propeller thrust line, and it is that issue that we'll discuss next time.